In these next videos, we're going to be taking a look at how we can go into Substance Painter, get all of our models inside of Substance Painter, uh, and be able to set up all of our different maps that we baked up from Substance Designer to where we can actually start painting on this thing in Substance Painter. So what you see here is uh, a pretty big project, and it's got these different pieces on here. right? So everything's separated out but you're able to look at everything together as one entirety inside of Substance Painter. So let's look at how we get that set up. We have to go over to Maya for this and if you look at Maya you can see that I've got these different pieces inside of here. These are actually different pieces of geometry and we got this helmet and then the face here and if we open up the UV texture window if we go to Windows and then go to UV Editor let's take a look at that. We've got each one of these pieces has their own 0 to 1 UV space. So we've got one for the body, we've got one for this um, this piece here, we've got this for this back part for his shield, and then his helmet. You can see we have those pieces together, and then the face. Okay, So um, they're all separate objects. We're, we're going to put different materials on each one of these as well. You can see they're kind of color-coded and the colors don't matter, but you just need to get a material in there. So if we go to Windows Rendering Editors and go to the Hypershade, let's open that up and take a look. You'll see on each one of these there's different uh, materials that I made. So we've got one for the belt and I actually gave these things a name. So we got a belt, we got the face, we have the helmet, uh, we have the shield and we have the suit and again these are they can be any type of material I just made blend materials and again you can just give it a name uh, and these names are going to carry over into Substance Painter so once you have all the materials set up and you assign them to them um, then you're just going to take the entire model like this select it and say file export selection and you want to use um, the FBX exporter on here so like this. I don't think the references really matter all that much. Let's take a look at the presets um, real quick. I know you can embed materials and things like that but I don't think that's necessary for that. If we go to geometry um, you might want to have smoothing groups, uh, tangents and binormals um, and I think these are kind of the, some of the settings that I usually have for uh, UE4 and I think that's usually what I um, export out with so I think that will be just fine for what you need for that and so you export all your pieces out and store that and if we go back to Substance Painter um, we'll look at this as if we are um, just starting a brand new project okay so I'm gonna say file new and we can tell the document resolution. I'll just keep it at 2048 for right now. And if we start off new with something, you can actually select the mesh that you're going to import in. So I'm going to hit select. And then I'm going to navigate uh, to the area for this. And I think I actually have this one saved out as an OB OBJ. Um, we looked at earlier, I have the OBJs for the helmet. I'm just going to take a look at the helmet right now for things. So I have this helmet all. So I'll go ahead and open that. And then we can import our maps in. Uh, you can do this later. You can pull them into this texture area and then pull them up. But I'm just going to kind of show you what this looks like if we just start off with everything kind of baked out. So we go ahead and add our maps that we're going to find. And I have um, these right here where I actually have that in a different section. Let me go navigate to that real quick. Okay, and I have these maps here, so I'm just going to select everything. Select this first one, hold on Shift and select everything. Hit Open, and it's going to add all these different maps there for me. I'll go ahead and hit OK, like that. And it should start off and make a new project for us. So you can see here, it's going to load up the helmet. Um, on the helmet, I didn't have uh, these different materials on it, so it's just going to load it up as one, one thing. But the way that you saw me export out the entire uh, body in the suit, That'll work fine if you want to make multiple pieces for this thing. Okay, so when I pull this thing in, you can see here's the different texture maps that we pulled in, right? And if we make sure we come here to this section over here with the viewer settings and take a look at our materials and our texture stack, this is where we can start um, adding our textures to this thing. So we select that material, 
um, which is this helmet. And then it's going to ask you up in here in this area, it's going to say, um, do you want to select a normal map? So yes, I'm going to want to take this normal map and I'm going to plug it in here. And you can see immediately the normals go on here. And I want to take my world space normal, throw it here. The uh, select ID map, which is that color map that we baked out, goes right here. Immune occlusion, right here. I'll throw in my curvature map right here, like that. I'll take the position map that we baked out, throw it right here, and we've got our thickness map right there. And so this will give you everything that you need to uh, to get going here. So let's talk about navigation in here real quick. So if I hold down Alt and left mouse drag, that's going to uh, rotate. Alt, middle mouse, that's going to pan and Alt and move up and down with right click and that's going to zoom in and out so very similar controls to uh, what Maya has now if you want to rotate your light around which is this IBL and here just hold down shift and then click and drag left or right and you can change the, uh, the lighting on the model here okay um, we also have this area for post effects and you can actually turn these on and you can turn on different things for anti-aliasing if you want to turn on a vignette and you know pump up the strength on that there's different settings for some of these things. Um, I don't really use much anything else. You can actually turn on uh, lens distortion. There's glare that you can do, uh, tone mapping, depth of field. Um, but really for painting, I don't really need that stuff on. And if you're really worried about performance, you can turn all this stuff off. Uh, it does make it look a little bit better, but um, you know it's up to you. So let's go to viewer settings here. Here's where you can actually tell it what type of material that you're going to be using. So this is a PBR metal rough, and that's what's going to start off. If you want to use any kind of uh, transparency with full transparency, then you can use this PBR metal rough with alpha blending to get transparency on there. And if you want um, alpha testing to where it's basically the transparency is just going to be on or off, you can use this one. There's a pixelated material. Don't really use that one. There's also a, a tune material but don't really care about those too much. Uh, the one I'm really concerned about is this PBR Metal Rough. And you can see within here, um, you've got your different environment maps that you can use within here. So you can just choose a different environment map like that. And you can see you're going to be able to change your different uh, lighting scenarios in there. If you want to get stuff that's more like studio lighting, they've got these studio lighting scenarios. And um, let's see here. I think I'm going to get this back to maybe something like that. That looks kind of cool. So if the background is um, a bit distracting to you, you can take this environment opacity and you can kind of drag that thing down and lessen the visibility of the environment. You can also crank up the exposure on the environment or lessen it. And if you want, you can actually change these values and put a numeric value in there. Something new they added is shadows, and so you can turn those on. There's three different quality uh, methods for this. So there's the slow, there's this most, which is a little bit nicer, this main one, which is um, got better quality but doesn't run quite as fast. So you can see it, it kind of like as you rotate the right light around holding down shift, it updates the shadow, and then when you let go, it kind of resolves things a little bit better. So. Um, and it's actually taking the lighting information from this light back here and generating the shadows with that. Uh, I think it's pretty performance heavy, so you know you might want to leave that off until you want to kind of get a better look at your model for quality and stuff like that later. So you can turn that off. We also have AO intensity, so you saw us plug in that ambient occlusion map, and if you crank that up all the way, then it gets a little bit stronger, or you can lessen that thing. Um, put that like 0.75. Height force, I would just leave that alone. That's going to tell how, you know, when you're painting height, how far the height should look like it's uh, sticking up from the surface. This quality, so this is the medium quality. If you put it on high, obviously it's going to get a better quality look, but uh, it's going to, you know, be heavier on your performance. So we could just leave that on medium. Emissive intensity, this is if you're going to get any parts on your model that's going to be, you know, self-illuminated through an emissive map, how strong you want that intensity to be. And I think leaving that at one should be a pretty good thing there. 
these other things for stencil opacity if you're going to be painting with stencils in here it's just how how um, opaque does that show up on the screen and also this when you're painting if you got a stencil up as soon as you start painting it's going to hide the stencil whenever you do that um, there's some other things where you can actually see uh, wireframe on the model on this thing by selecting this and you can change the wireframe opacity on there like that if we go back to just painting mode that'll go away um, so then you've got these other areas for your textures where you can actually um, pull in uh, textures um, actually I was hoping you could right click in here and maybe add that but it's not in that area you can go file and then you can import images and then whenever you import images that you're going to want to use it's going to show up in this uh, texture area um, they also have alphas that you can use procedurals these generators which we'll talk a little bit more about in the next video um, actually generates like the edgeware and things like that and they've got some pre set up things for you that you could use within here um, there's also these filters environments that's what we already kind of looked at for uh, the environment back here I believe no you can't just drag those in so you're gonna have to go and then you can drag them out from here and go to this environment map section um, so it's possible you could bring in your own HDRI maps and then load those up if you wanted to and throw those in here and take a look at that for the, your um, for your lighting um, so that's definitely a possibility um, I'm gonna go back to this urban environment kinda like that one it's kinda neat and so here's this here we've got our different brushes if you want to paint with particle brushes that's there you can also make your own tools for uh, painting with within here um, after you get a complete setup you can save that out and then reuse those and here's their different materials they have and some of their different smart materials over here is where we're going to be working with layers and in this area is going to give you all the information for if you're working with a material or if you're working with uh, just brushes the different settings that they have and the different alphas and things like that so um, Another thing you might kind of care about is turning on and off symmetry. I'm not a huge fan of this image plane thing that sticks up here, but uh, that's how you can kind of visualize which axis you're going to be mirroring on. So the only one that I'm really concerned about is mirroring on X. So you're able to turn uh, that on and off by doing that there. The other thing is you can view in a 3D and a 2D mode at the same time. What's kind of cool is even if you paint inside of the 2D view when you go across borders, it actually fixes that stuff for you. So it's not like Photoshop where if you paint across the border, it's going to cause this big seam. They kind of fix that for you. So it's possible that you can look in 2D only mode. And if you hold on shift, you can actually move the lighting around on that. So it's kind of cool to see it laid out in your texture view that way and be able to see that or you can do uh, 3D only and I think that's probably where I spend most of the time uh, when I'm painting on this stuff um, let's see if there's anything else really that's that kind of pressing for this thing I think that's um, gonna cover like the basics for just kinda getting your work in and getting your model set up to the point where you can start uh, painting so in the next video we're gonna be taking a look at actually working with some layers and some different materials and how we can actually use layer groups things like that and start actually um, getting some color on this thing